All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for those of you who have just uh, popped on to our workshop today. Uh, my name is Terry Rosen, and I'm going to be uh, one of the presenters today. I just, uh, oh, it said Harry Rosen. Sorry about that. My name is Terry Rosen with a T. <laughs> um, Focus. Oh, okay, back to it. <laughs> I got distracted by our auto captions. Um, so you are joining us today for text. All right. Augmented. Hello everyone. All right. Thank you for those Hello everyone. Thank and you for those going to our workshops today. Uh, just, uh, my name is Terry Rosen. My name is Terry Rosen. One of the presenters uh, today. I just one of the presenters today. I Terry Rosen. My name is Terry Rosen with the T. My name is Terry Rosen with the T. Focus. Oh, okay, back to it. I got distracted by our auto captions. Okay, um, did the echo, uh, did that get fixed? I just, I realized that it, it was streaming to my, um, my YouTube as well. And so I had to go and mute it on my YouTube. So hopefully that is fixed now, so that's good. All right, so thanks for hanging with us and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so like I mentioned, my name is Terry Rosen. I'm going to enunciate to make sure that our auto captioning uh, gets that correct. <laughs> um, and I'm the director of the Simon Technology Center at the Pacer Center. Um, we are located in Bloomington, Minnesota, which is just a tiny bit south of uh, Minneapolis. Um, we are currently working remotely, so Elizabeth and I are both coming to you from our homes today, uh, but we are also both assistive technology specialists, um, and we both have backgrounds in education. Um, but I'll let Elizabeth um, pop on and say hello, because she's the one with all of the really great content knowledge today. Hi, hey everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. As Terry said, my name is Elizabeth Berry, and I am the communication specialist in the Simon Technology Center. So I work um, with individuals from a very young age to um, all the way up to later adulthood um, looking at communication tools. And I'm excited to share some tools with you today. Excellent. Um, so what I just put into the chat in both our YouTube page and in the chat in Zoom webinar are links to today's handouts. Um, one of the links is to the presentation slides, uh, which are the PowerPoint presentation you're viewing today. Um, there is a second link to a supplemental handout, which has um, extensive information about all the tools we're gonna cover today, as well as a few additional things. And just um, to explain to you a little bit about how the workshop is going to work today. Um, so, we are gonna go through some kind of basic information slides. Um, oh, I see somebody says they don't see the links. I'm gonna paste them again um, if it doesn't show up. Yeah, oh, and Terry, wait. make sure you share them with everyone rather you know, than. You know what? Thank you, Elizabeth. I made it for hosts and panelists and I'm going to make it to everyone. Let's try that again. All right, hopefully that one worked. <laughs> um, now it's sharing to everyone. That's a good um, thing to mention is when you uh, talk in the chat, um, there is a two button and it either says to everyone, to hosts and panelists, to specific uh, speakers. Um, so if you're wanting to post something for everyone to see, you have to click to everyone. Um, so like I was mentioning, um, so today uh, with um, the presentation, what Elizabeth is going to be doing, um, or I'm gonna start out with some basic introductory slides on AAC and about the Pacer Center. Um, and then once we get to the section uh, where Elizabeth is gonna go into the demos of the specific apps. She's gonna work directly from her iPad and not necessarily be switching between the PowerPoint and, um, and her iPad screen, just because that um, gets a little bit clunky on the presenting side of things and it just makes things a lot smoother. So what we are going to encourage you to do is to click on the link to the, especially the presentation slides, if you're somebody who really likes to follow along specifically with those slides, because the demonstrations that she does today are gonna go exactly in the order that are on the presentation slides. And actually, I believe it's the exact order on the supplemental handout slides as well. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and you click on those links um, so that you have it handy if you're someone who likes to follow along that way. Um, the links are also in the reminder email that you received for this workshop. 
Um, so if that's an easier place for you to access them, you can do that. Or um, if you are somebody who likes QR codes um, and want to look at uh, the handouts on a device, if you're watching on a computer and you want to look at them on your uh, phone or your tablet or your iPad, um, you can just open up the camera app on your phone, um, hold it up to your screen so that you're focusing over the QR code, and then you should get a little pop-up that will, um, you just have to tap it and it should open up um, the link to that as well. If you are having issues with that, please mention it in the chat, but it should be uh, pretty easy to access um, in those two places. Okay, so tips for this webinar. Um, like I mentioned, we are presenting on Zoom webinar today. Uh, we do also have this streaming to our Simon Pacer YouTube channel. Um, so if you're not subscribed to that, you could certainly do so, because um, that is also where all of our workshops are archived. Um, at, well, we record them and we archive them in that location. So that's a great thing to um, follow if you are uh, an assistive technology person or just interested in learning more about assistive technology for either yourself or the folks that you work with. Um, things that we'll share in the chat, one that I've already done, uh, links to the handouts. At the very end of the time, the link to the workshop evaluation will get shared in the chat as well, uh, both on Zoom webinar and YouTube. Um, and I will be monitoring the chats in both of those locations today. So if you're joining us via YouTube, please feel free to chat and put questions there. If you're joining us via Zoom webinar, you can certainly put questions in the chat or you can put them in the Q&A um, part of Zoom webinar as well. Um, like I mentioned before, if you're posting in the chat, please make sure it's if you want um, to post a question, sometimes it's helpful to post it to everyone um, so that when either myself or Elizabeth responds to the question that people have context for that question. Um, if you're having technical difficulties, if you're having questions for us, um, please feel free to post those things uh, there as well. And if for some crazy reason you would happen to lose connection to this through Zoom webinar, and you're unable to get in, um, the, probably the best place to catch back up with us is through uh, our YouTube channel. So again, that's called Simon Pacer. And certificate of attendance, this is a really common question that we get for our workshop attendees because we get a lot of uh, professionals who attend our workshops. Um, that is available to people who are attending this live workshop today. Um, over Zoom webinar or YouTube. Um, the way that you uh, get this uh, certificate of attendance is um, you must complete our um, workshop evaluation uh, that the link for that will get shared at the very end of the workshop. And once you submit that, um, a, a, a box will, well, well, it will go to a thank you screen and there will be some blue link text that says, click here to access certificate of attendance. You will need to click on that link. Um, it'll bring you to um, a Google Drive link. Um, some people struggle with Google Drive or their organizations won't let them access it. So if that um, is the case, um, you can email stc at pacer.org for additional support on that. But we do encourage you to click on it through that link, save it immediately, because um, it will not be emailed to you separately uh, for attending. You must access it that way. Um, and if you are watching this in the future um, in our archives, please note that this is only available for those who watch this um, on our original presentation date. And we do keep it open just for a little bit of time after uh, because we sometimes have folks watching us from lots of different time zones and sometimes from lots of different countries. So we do keep it open a little bit past, but not really more than a day or so past the original presentation date. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background on uh, the organization for which we work, uh, we work for the PACER Center, um, which is an organization that has been around since the 70s. Um, we have about 30 different programs for both um, families of individuals with disabilities and also um, individuals with disabilities, uh, the professionals that work with them, and really it was built on the idea of parents helping parents and advocacy. Um, we are just one of the 30 programs in the Simon Technology Center where we focus on assistive technology, but we also have a national center on transition and employment, uh, which I have a feeling we have a lot of transition folks joining us today. Um, so that's a great resource, tons and tons of information there. We have a children's mental health project. Um, we have a puppet program, newsletters, lots of present, um, lots of publications as well. Um, so 
tons of stuff on our website. If you haven't checked us out, please do. There's a lot there. Uh, so where Elizabeth and I work is the Simon Technology Center, and really our goal is to make the benefits of assistive technology more accessible to both children and adults with disabilities. Um, many parts of PACER um, are focused on uh, school-age students. Uh, in the STC, we work with all ages from uh, little itty bitty buddies all the way through much later, much later adulthood. Um, for example, we've worked with individuals in their 80s, 90s even. Um, we had one man who just wanted to be able to continue journaling, but was losing his motor function in his hands. So worked with us to learn about tools that could help him to continue to write um, with um, what he was able to do. Um, we do this through information and referral. You know, sometimes people just get in touch with us with questions. We have an assistive technology lending library where people can uh, borrow items from us for trial. We do free assistive technology technology consultations, which are not the same as assessments. They are more informal than that, but a great place um, to learn about what's out there um, and to help work with one of our specialists one on one for a guided um, exploration of tools. And we also do um, individualized trainings as well. So in terms of today's agenda, um, we are going to be just briefly touching on considerations for text-based AAC. Um, and then Elizabeth is gonna spend most of the time for this workshop doing those demonstrations on the text-based tools. Um, she's gonna very briefly at the end talk about other dedicated device and software options, and then um, questions and evaluations. And we encourage questions throughout because um, sometimes we, wind up with time at the end for questions. Sometimes we don't. So if a question pops into your head, please feel free to post it in the Q&A or the chat and we will do our best um, to answer it as we go. Um, you know, Elizabeth will be presenting, but I, if it's something um, that makes sense for that particular slide, I'll break in and ask that question of her, or it might be something that I know the answer to and I can just answer it in the Q&A or the chat. Um, so one thing that we always do um, or typically do is ask, who you are, because it's really helpful for us to know uh, what, who the audience is that we are presenting to. So if you, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll. Um, if you are in Zoom webinar with us, um, you will be able to um, access this poll. Um, it just basically asks, what is your primary role in viewing this webinar today? Um, and where are you viewing from today? Uh, we're always curious to know um, where people are watching. Our workshop from, and if you are happen if you happen to be watching us in our YouTube stream, um, go ahead and just comment in the chat there um, about who you are and where you're watching us from. So we'll just let this go for a few more seconds. Um, but it's looking like um, the bulk of our audience today is professional. It's kind of hovering around that ninety four percent or ninety percent range, ninety to ninety two, um, and it looks like oh, really interesting. Um, you know, we are based in Minnesota, so a lot of times our audience is Minnesota heavy, but today it looks like about 70% of our audience is actually outside of Minnesota. So wonderful. If this is your first time viewing one of our workshops, we're really glad that you're here. And thanks so much for taking part um, in this workshop today. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. Thanks so much for taking part in that today. Um, I'll just share the results with you really briefly. And because of the way um, Zoom webinar works, these, this poll and this, the results won't show up in our, our YouTube stream. So um, if you're in YouTube and you're not seeing this, it's just because of uh, how the Zoom webinar works. Um, but pretty cool to see where people are coming to us from. Okay, um, so what is text-based AAC? And actually, before I even dive into this, I'm going to really quickly mention why we're doing this workshop today. Um, so one of the reasons that we decided to do a text-based AAC workshop is because um, we've, we have, we've had people ask for it. We have done quite a few workshops over the years on augmentative and alternative and augment, I always say those in the wrong order, augmentative and alternative communication. Um, and we've done quite a few workshops that more specifically focus on symbol-based tools. Um, but it's been pretty consistent that we get some feedback that says, you know, I work with an adult who's literate. I work with an adult who 
um, symbols are not the right tool for them, even if it's a combination of symbols and words on the screen. So, you know, we were really kind of responding to the feedback that people are really interested in knowing about these um, tools for um, not just adults, but older students as well, um, who need some communication support, um, but that find symbol-based tools not to be the right fit uh, for what they need, or that it feels like sometimes maybe they um, are geared towards younger individuals. That's not really true. It's not necessarily geared toward a younger individual, um, but sometimes it's interpreted that way. So we are kind of meeting that need here with this text-based workshop. And when we think about um, all of these apps, you know, these are the things on this slide are really the things that they have in common. And then when Elizabeth presents, she's going to show some of those tools to show kind of what's different. Um, and she's going to try and get as many of those tools in as she can. We only have an hour today, uh, but she's going to try and get lots of them in. Um, so one thing that all these tools have in common is that most of them don't just have you know, an alphabet on the screen that you type and then it'll say the words aloud for you. Typically there's a combination of that spelling feature and also some pre-written messages and phrases. Um, most of these tools also have word prediction. So word prediction is something that I think all of us use at some point when we are texting or typing, you know, where something is gonna try and finish that word for us to try and make our typing more efficient uh, and so that we can get things out more quickly. Um, so one thing to know is that when you think about how it might um, translate to a low tech example, you might think about it as something you know as simple as writing a message on a piece of paper and then showing it to somebody, um, pointing to words or letters on a paper communication board. That would be a low tech example. What we're gonna talk about today are more specific to high tech examples. Um, so all of these apps are really intended for individuals um, who can read and write, but may not be able to meet all of their communication needs. So they may not be somebody who um, always needs to use a communication app. It might be an individual who has certain situations where they struggle with communication, or perhaps um, they can communicate really well with the people who know them really well, um, but maybe people who don't know them as well can't understand their speech as well. So this would be a tool that would help them in those types of situations. Um, Elizabeth, do you have anything you would add to that? Yeah, I just wanted to add that the picture on the screen is a, um, a screenshot from a low tech um, communication board that's available from the ACE Center. So um, on your supplemental handout, there is a low tech um, section. And there, there are some places where if you're just looking for a board, you can print out and then um, point to different letters or words. There are some resources there for um, if that's something you're interested in. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so when we are considering um, what particular app to use for an individual, we really encourage using a person-centered process. Um, and this is really built on a, a very particular process called SET, um, which was created by Zo Joy Zabala, who very recently passed away. Um, but she came up with this framework that is a person-centered framework. Um, and the S stands for student, because when she created it, she was thinking more towards school-age students. Um, but you can generalize that to person, because this framework really works for everybody. The E stands for environment, where that person is going to use that particular tool. Um, what do they need to be able to do with that particular tool? And what, what do they need to be doing in that setting um, that they're doing it? And then once we've kind of considered all of those pieces, then going to say, okay, what tool is going to be the right fit for this? Because what is really common is people will come to us and say, I have this device. How do I make this work for uh, the individual that I work with? And we really want to flip that on its head and say, okay, let's look at the features that we need and that person's individual strength, and then let's match it that way instead of trying to fit a tool to a person. So that's really what the set process is all about. And that's what we really encourage as a best practice for device consideration. Um, and, you know, as you know, we're thinking about these different features that are going to be important for an individual, we're going to continue to use um, those, um, you know, that framework. And I see someone in the chat said, what does the TT stand for in set? So the T's are tasks and tools. So what tasks does the individual need to do? And then once we consider all those pieces, what 
to, the second T is for tools. What tools are gonna be the best fit to support that individual? Thank you for asking that question. Okay, so when we think about high tech AAC, these are some features that you are gonna find in many of these different apps. Um, and really when we're thinking about what's gonna be the best fit, we wanna do some feature matching um, you know, with you know, the strengths and needs of the individual um, who's gonna be using that tool. Um, and today in what Elizabeth is uh, demonstrating for you, she's gonna talk about all of these things in some way, but really the biggest thing she's gonna be focusing are on our two through five. So keyboard layout, word prediction, sentence prediction, um, the letter codes, text replacement, abbreviation and expansion. And then she's also gonna be talking a lot about the voice options, because these are all things um, that are really important to the individual who is using it. Um, Elizabeth, would you add anything else to that particular slide before you go into um, your demonstrations? Yeah, I would just, if you're interested in some tools for feature, feature matching, there are also some tools linked on the supplemental handout if you're in, if kind of a grid structure is helpful for considering things. Um, and if you're interested in diving deep into each of these features, um, the webinar that's linked on the screen from the ACE Center really goes in depth on each of these topics. Um, we're going to talk about them today and how they relate to um, the tools that we're looking at. But if you want kind of, you know, what is um, word prediction, what is conversation control and things like that, um, that's a good webinar to check out. Awesome. So I think we are just gonna dive right into those device demonstrations. So um, in just a moment, Elizabeth is gonna share her iPad screen and then she's gonna go into it. Just a reminder um, that if you are someone who likes to follow along with the PowerPoint, please make sure that you open up the link in those presentation slides that we shared um, so that you have it handy to follow along um, as she goes. Cause we won't be flopping back and forth between the iPad screen and the PowerPoint. Um, so. With, without further ado, I'll let Elizabeth um, dive in. All right, I'm just gonna share my iPad here. All right. And so I am demonstrating on an iPad today, just kind of for ease of demonstration, um, but a lot of these tools are available on other platforms as well, whether it be Android, Windows, or a dedicated device. Um, and in some places I will mention that, but if you're looking for kind of a, where things are available, the supplemental handout will be a great resource for that. Um, I am gonna go in the order that they are listed on the handouts um, so that you'll be able to follow along with us. And, for most of the tools that we're gonna look at today, you can customize how they look, their appearance, um, you can add words, you can um, add different phrases. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time looking at that on each of these tools that we're gonna look at because that's kind of a universal feature of them. So we're gonna look more at the function of them. How would you use them to communicate, um, you know, whether you were at school or work or at the doctor's office um, and look a little bit more at what makes each of them unique. So if you're trying to decide between um, tools, you know a little bit um, kind of those special features for each one. And as Terry mentioned, I hope to show as many as I can. So I am gonna um, go quickly, but please feel free to put questions in the chat. Um, and Terry will um, pop in and then um, I'm happy to kind of go back to one or look at something deeper if you would like. All right, so the first app that we're gonna look at is called Speech Assistant AAC and it's this kind of blue icon here. And this app is available um, on the iPad, obviously, and as well as Android, although on Android, they, it does have a little bit fewer features. So the full app um, is available on um, the Apple devices. So as you can see here on the main screen, over here um, on the bottom right, I have some kind of gray buttons that have different categories on them. So these are kind of my pre-written stored message categories. And then when I click on a category, so let's say if I click on work here, then my pre-stored phrases appear here on the right. And then if this is what I wanted to say, I'm going to work. I can click on it 
um, and it will speak my message. Um, obviously, as I said, you can add more words specific to your work um, there as well, but there are different um, things that are already stored here. So if I click on medical, um, there are lots of options here. You can even scroll, um, I'm scrolling here with my mouse, which you can um, scroll with your finger as well, um, that these are already built right in there for you. So that um, if, you know, if you need to tell someone that you're sick, sick, it's built right in there. Um, and so then you can add, of course, add different categories um, and phrases as well as they're needed. Um, but then up here in the upper right hand corner um, are our action buttons. And I'm just, the first one we're gonna look at here are the top two. Um, this X will delete what, I'm, what I have in the speech display bar here. And this one, um, the volume icon will speak. But I'm gonna delete here. And so the other way that I can use this app is by using spelling. So if I tap up here in the speech display bar, it brings up the keyboard. Um, and one thing you'll notice if you're familiar with an iPad, that this is the default keyboard for the iPad. So it's using that um, keyboard that's built into your device. So sometimes that's helpful because it's familiar. Um, we'll look in a second about a way you can change this keyboard. But this way, um, it uses the word prediction here. It's available with that keyboard. But if I start typing here, I can use spell. Um, apparently thinking about dogs right now. So I like dogs. Then I can use this volume button here to speak. I like dogs. So you can, with this app, you can use a combination of those pre-stored phrases, things you might say often, so you don't want to have to type them every single time, um, as well as the keyboard. So we go back up here to our action items. Um, the other things you can do with this app, if here you, if I click on this button here, it will make what I, I wrote bigger so that you could share it with someone. Um, the other neat thing that it will do is if I click on this A with the arrow button here, it will flip it around so that if I was talking with someone who was across from me and we were in a noisy environment, I could show them what I had written and we could have our conversation that way. Um, and then of course you can edit and add phrases and things like that. You can also share what you've written to texts or emails or other apps, um, as well as um, get people's attention with this doorbell here that you're, you have something to say. So very quickly here, I wanna go into the settings here. Um, and so you can change a lot of things about how this looks, um, what words are there. Um, one thing I wanna go here into the categories and phrases setting here. Um, and down at the bottom, they, have, they do have an abbreviation expansion where you can put in certain letters and then when you press space, it will expand. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, but one thing to notice as you'll kind of, as we look at other apps, um, this one only has two that are built into the device so that if you wanted to use more, you would have to add more. Um, and so that there are just two built in here. But if I go back um, and if I'm gonna type in HHY with the keyboard and we'll see what happens. Elizabeth, can you share the name of this app again? Yeah, it is called Speech Assistant AAC. And Thank then you. If, um, one, if you would like to use it with a switch, for access, then it's speech assist switch. Um, so I'm gonna go back here, clear this. So the abbreviation that was built in was HHY. So if I type HHY and then press the space bar, it expands into what was built into the settings. So if there are phrases you say a lot or um, things you just want easy access to, but you, then you can add into that abbreviation expansion category um, and have those words that um, will expand like that. All right, so that was a quick overview of Speech Assistant AAC. Um, 
our next app is called, um, the free version is called Clericom, and then the paid version, um, which we're going to spend most of our time in here, um, is called Clericom Pro. And this app, as you kind of look at it, um, looks pretty similar in kind of how it's set up to Speech Assistant AAC. Um, so we'll look at some of kind of what makes this one unique. So again, here I have on the left-hand side, I have some categories. So I have things like coffee shop, education, entertainment. And again, um, in the paid version of this app, you can add more categories. But if I click on education here, then over here on the right, it expands to the things that are stored in that category. So if I say, when's the next lecture? I could speak that. Hopefully. Oh, my sound has stopped working here. Terry, are you hearing anything through? Um, I'm not hearing your device. I hear you. So you might just have to start your share again. Yeah. All right. Let's try this again. When's the next lecture? All right. There we go. Sound is back. All right. Good. Um, so the same way with the last app that we looked at, I can pick a category and have a pre-stored phrase that I would like to use. Um, I can also um, tap in the speech bar, this yellow bar here, and bring up the keyboard. Um, and like the other app, it does use the device keyboard um, and word prediction. Um, but you'll also notice there's something different here that there are kind of some phrases here as well. Um, and this is one thing that really makes this app in particular unique um, for a few reasons. Um, so you'll notice that in this first phrase, hello, my name is Simon. Um, the Simon is because that is our username in the app for the Simon Technology Center. But in the paid version of this app, not in the free version, what you can do is you can say, put in the username. And then what it will do is it will populate that name into any of the pre-stored phrases where a name is needed. So, you know, my name is, hello, my name is blank, things like that. Um, so that's um, a way to easily personalize it. The other thing that um, this app is unique about um, is that the abbreviation expansion feature uh, is built into this phrase prediction. So if I wanted to say, my name is Simon, I could type it out. Um, but what's neat about this app is that if I put in the first letter of each word in the, what I want to type, so M N I S, it brings up anything that has, that's a pre-stored phrase that starts with those letters in each word. So then I can just say, click one of My I name is Simon. And it will speak for me. Um, so that is a pretty unique feature um, that that abbreviation expansion is built into um, the phrase prediction. You can also um, add just regular keyboard shortcuts as well, um, but that is one unique feature of this app. Um, I do um, want to go into the settings here for a second. Um, and one thing I didn't mention about Speech Assistant AAC is that it used um, the device voices that come that you can download on your iPad. Um, and this app does as well. So if I go into the settings and then if I go into voice name here, um, there are three voices here um, that come um, with the paid version. So um, I have um, Samantha and Tom would only be with the paid version. Those are some a little higher um, system voices, if the free version just has the standard iOS English one. Um, and these voices are okay, but some, some people might prefer um, a higher quality voice. And in this app, in Clericom Pro, you can do um, get a higher quality voice through an in-app purchase. So if I go back here to the store, 
and then click on add on voices. There are lots of voices for lots of different languages. Um, and I'm just going to use um, the American ones as an example. Um, if you're familiar at all with any, um, you know, the more expensive communication apps, these voices are often included in those apps, which is some, sometimes why the price is so much. Um, so we'll look at a few apps in a little bit that do have these voices as part of them. Um, but you could decide, oh, I want to use the Heather voice, listen to a sample, um, and then they're $1.99 a piece to upgrade to that um, higher quality voice. So this one allows you to do that. And as I mentioned, there is a free version um, called just Clerocom. This one is Clerocom Pro. Um, and if you download that one and start using it, the, it, will look, it will look pretty similar and things like that. Um, and it's a great way to see if it's a good fit for you or someone that you're in your family or that you're working with. Um, there are a few differences between the free version and this version, um, which is $16.99 for a one-time purchase. Um, you can personalize it with your name, which I've talked about. Um, you can add categories um, to this category listing here so that if there's something here um, that doesn't cover something that's important in your life, you can add that. Um, and the other thing that you can't do in the free version is to use the share feature. So up here in the upper right hand corner is the little box with the arrow um, coming out of it. And if I click on that, then I can take whatever is in my speech display bar and I could use it in a text, I could use it in an email, um, or I could use it in any app on my device. So that is a feature that's only available um, in the paid version. All right. So the next app that we're gonna look at is called Proloco for Text. And this app is a little more expensive. It's $119.99. Um, and I'm getting asked all sorts of questions today about my iPad. Um, and so this app um, in landscape looks like this. So my iPad is in landscape. Uh, if I turn it the other way, it does, um, it um, puts the quick blocks at the bottom there. So we're gonna look at it this way. But over here on the left and then on the right, the, um, I have what the app calls quick blocks. And so first I have phrases, which kind of looks like that category option in some of the other apps that we looked at, um, where you know I can click on things like medical appointments um, and it has phrases built in. So if I click on this first one here and then click the play button, Oh, the sound is gone again. I apologize. Let's try and share that again here. Oops. Okay, let's try this again. If I press the play button. I would like to make an appointment with. And Terry, can you let me know if you're hearing that? Just to verify there. Your sound is back. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's way, obviously you would edit the phrase or you could then press um, here in the text pad and you could use the keyboard to type, um, which we'll look at in just a second here. Um, whoops. But the other things here, if I click the little arrow up here by phrases, the little down arrow here, um, it brings me to something called conversations. And what this does, this is a neat feature that sometimes, you know, you can be talking with someone and you might be writing out what you want to say, but then you get interrupted and you need to, you know, answer your spouse quickly or, um, you know, answer someone at work who, who has um, asked you a question quickly, but you were in the middle of something. 
And so I don't necessarily want to have to delete this and start all over again once I come back to this conversation. So what I can do is I can click the plus sign up here by conversations and it will start a whole new conversation for me, but it has saved the um, conversation that I did. So here um, I could um, type and I'm just, for the sake of time here, I'm gonna show a few features at once here. So we'll come back to this conversation piece. Um, but there is another tool over here called sentence prediction, which is using the pre-stored phrases as what it's predicting from. And so if I click here to type with my keyboard, You'll notice I have the word prediction from the iPad, but I also have word prediction from the app that's learning from what I type. Um, you know, if that's too busy and you don't want both of those, you can turn them off in the settings. But this way, if I type, um, if you watch what happens up here in the sentence prediction, um, if I type I and then a space, you can see that the sentence prediction has started changing to things um, that follow that. So then if I start writing like, I could use the word prediction here, um, but I also has um, come up here. So I could just say, if I, was I like to swim. I like to swim um, is a way, a quick way to say something um, and find something that's stored there. So that is our sentence prediction. But now if I say I was done with this conversation, so you can go back here, oops, there we go, to my conversations. Um, and I can go back to this conversation that I had before and I'm right back where I was and I can continue with that conversation. So it's a neat feature um, to kind of be able to store things. And then over here on the right, you have some real things that are programmed for quick talk. Um, so if I press, excuse me, excuse me, these things speak, um, right away, but they don't put the text into the text pad. So things that you might, um, be doing. So, um, that is quick talk. And then there is also, um, a history section here too, so that if you wanted to go back to something that you had said, you could go here and click on it. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is that when I, speak, which you can do here with the play button down here. Oh. Okay, my sound is gone again. Um, I will show one more thing with this app and then most all uh, that I don't need sound for and then we'll fix it here. Um, but if you notice up here is are these kind of four arrows pointing out. This is another app um, that can make your speech bigger. Um, what you've written bigger so that you can share it with others. And then down here in the bottom corner, um, there's these two little triangles. And if I press this, it will flip it. So if someone was sitting across from me, um, it would be right side up for them. Um, and one thing I will mention about um, this is that the voices that come with this device are those more um, higher quality voices that were in at purchases in Clarocom. Um, so these voices um, are um, some better voices that are, um, is one reason why this app is more expensive. All right, Terry, while I'm resharing, are there any questions um, or comments? Um, so far, no specific questions about the content. Um, okay. Somebody mentioned that it that the, the sound issue just seems to happen over Zoom. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Um, sometimes there are just glitchy things with sound sharing and you have to reshare each particular one. And sometimes it all works beautifully and we don't have a single issue. So um, we are grateful to you. Yes, all thanks for, for sticking being with us. Patient with us um, as this happens. Sometimes you can practice and prepare for everything, but sometimes glitches just pop up. So, yes. um, somebody did ask the cost of Speech Assist AAC. So the main um, I um, Apple version is eighteen ninety nine. Um, if you want the Switch version for the, which is Apple only, that is nineteen ninety nine. And then for Android, it's a little different. There is a free download on Android, but again, it would have fewer features. 
And then I believe the full Android version version is six ninety nine. Um, however, that version um, doesn't have necessarily all of the features that the iPad, the Apple version does. Um, so there, there is kind of some range in price there depending on what platform you're using. And all of the price information for all of these different platforms is also available in the supplemental handout. Yes, as well as links to more information as well. All right, so. I'm gonna keep going so we can keep looking at as many as we can. Um, the next app that we're gonna look at is called Predictable. Um, and of the apps we're looking at today, this is the most expensive one, I believe, or a more expensive one. Um, so this one is $159 um, on Apple and $174 on Android. Um, the first thing that you will notice with this app versus the first three that we've looked at is that the keyboard is right there on the screen. So I'm not using the device keyboard, I'm using the keyboard that's built into the app. Um, this also um, up here in the kind of the peach color here, if I can drag it here. Yes. I might have to use my finger here. Oh, it will, oh, because it's at the end. Um, this is where your history is. So everything that you've said, if you want to find it, can be there. Um, the yellow is your from your favorites category, which we'll get to it where it actually is located in a second. Um, but that, those things are what's available at the top of the screen. Um, and this, again, has word prediction built in. So these blue buttons, if I start typing here, um, will change so that um, then I can use these um, to add to my message. Um, and so I can also click on my history. I am good. Um, I, and then I will add it there. Um, and then I do have some kind of action buttons here in the gray area. So this arrow that's pointing upward will allow me to share what's ever in my speech um, bar there. And then I can um, delete and things like that. And you can customize which ones show up here, um, as well as then um, if we go down to this, these little three little white lines here, this brings us into some of the kind of categories and pre-stored phrases. And this is where they live in this app. Um, so you can just use them this way. Oh, it's hard to scroll with my mouse here. Um, so there are lots of different options. I find this a little kind of com too compact for me. So there you can um, click on this button right here and it will bring it kind of more full screen. But here are those favorites that were listed across the top on the homepage. They have some um, kind of core words, words that the research has shown that we say a lot are here. Um, as well as some chat words that you can use if you're talking with someone, um, with a friend or at work or at school, um, as well as here are all of your categories with um, the built-in phrases. Go back to the home page here. And in the settings, um, just notice that um, in this app, um, the voices that are available are only the voices that kind of you can come with your, your, voice, your, your device that you can download on the iPad. Um, so they don't have those higher quality voices. Um, there are some great accessibility options with this device. You can use um, touch, switch. Um, if you have an iPad Pro or a phone, um, an iPhone that I believe is 10 or higher um, that has what they call the true depth camera, um, you can use head tracking, so you can select things um, by moving your head. Um, so there are some great accessibility features as well. There are also different options for um, the keyboard as well. So you can um, kind of use the QWERTY keyboard, which is kind of your standard keyboard in that order. Um, you can change it to an ABC order or high frequencies so that um, the letters you use most often are in um, a better position. Or um, an option 10 key is where, um, you know, there might be, actually I'll switch it to this here so you can see it. Um, yeah. Um, so now 
Um, this is great if you're a switch user, but then I can click on A, B, C, D, and E, and then it has bigger buttons for each letter there, but there are more um, clicks involved. All right. So, and then this one also does have other themes. Um, so, oh, there we go. Um, so kind of those standard themes, which were set up as well as a high contrast theme, if that would be helpful for the user, um, different ways that it can have the home screen organized. Um, and they also even have one um, that is um, made for people with dyslexia as well, a different kind of keyboard setup. So that is predictable. Elizabeth, just as a heads up, we have about 10 minutes. Um, okay. And is just like zooming on us today. So. Yes. So um, the next one I just want to show very briefly um, is a rather new app. It's called Dialog AAC. Um, and um, if you're familiar with Prenki Romex devices, this is basically the essence language system that is found on their accent line of devices um, available in an, in an iPad app form. Um, so this one, you can have 60 or 84 buttons per screen. It has the keyboard built in as well as some banked phrases here as well. Um, so, you know, they all kind of do operate similarly, but they just have a, kind of different ways they go about it. All right. Um, very quickly, I did want to mention um, the last three apps that are um, on the PowerPoint are Touch Chat HD, Grid for iPad, and um, TD Snap, which is the new name, excuse me. <coughs> and these are three apps that I think are commonly thought of more as symbol based apps, um, but they do have some text based page sets that are, can be useful for. Um, users who are literate or want a text-based page set, but maybe they already have one of these apps, but they um, are growing and learning and want to try something else. So um, the Touch Chat app here, this is the My Core page set. And what this is using is on this page are some core words, words that research has shown that we use a lot. And this one is unique in that it builds kind of, if you're familiar with touch chat with symbols, builds on what you say. So if I press I, I. and then if I press am, you can watch what happens to the screen. Um. So that these um, wor words here changed from, to have an ing ending because that would most likely be what would follow. So eating, you could use it that way. Um, you do have, you know, my quick chat where you have lots of things that you can say there, as well as um, the phrases that you can build in to different things. So um, as well, and then um, they also have a my word section here where they have even more categories so that if I click on work here, um, I have works, words here that are more applicable to that. Um, so that if you wanted to select words this way, you could. But, um, whoops, if I go home here, I can also press the spelling button here. Um, and it brings up a keyboard with word prediction. So this is great if you're, if maybe someone's already using the Touch Chat app. Um, but they want to transition to um, a more um, text-based page set, this one. And then I believe there is also a page set um, called Spelling as well that is basically just a keyboard um, like this that you within the Touch Chat app that are text-based. All right. So Grid for iPad has both symbols, page sets, as well as text-based. All right, so I'm going to, um, two of their text-based page sets are called Text Talker and Alpha Core. Um, so I'm going to go into Text Talker here. Um, and again, I have a keyboard built in with this row is my word prediction. 
and then a row of um, phrase prediction that's taking from the phrases that are built in to the device so that I can type and say, um, you know, where, then I get where here, but I also get other phrases and I can kind of go through them to find them all that are built in. Um, Where's the restroom? There. Um, what's unique about this one is again, it has that conversation control piece. So down here at the bottom, I could store this message and it went away. So I could have another conversation, but if I wanted to go back and retrieve it, if I click message retrieval here, then every message that I've saved is here. So I could click on this one and go back and continue my conversation that way. It does have those built-in phrases um, in different categories here on the left and the right. Um, so then you can also add to those as well. Um, alpha core does bring in some of those core words vocabulary if, if someone likes that. And then finally, since we only have a few minutes here, and now I'm going through this quick here, um, in TD Snap, which um, is the new name of the app, you might be more familiar with um, the name Snap Core First. It's the same app, they just changed the name. Um, this app has also has a built-in text-based page set. So the home page here is what they call the quick fires. And so here I have things that I could say very quickly. Oh, and I've lost my sound again. Um, but then down here on the on the left hand side are kind of how I navigate. So I could go to phrases here. And here I have lots of different categories and also lots of places to add my own categories. So if I wanted one for work or for college or school, I could do that. And then within each of these, they have some phrases. Um, you can get back to the keyboard here and here kind of similar to the rest of these can type um, and have some word prediction as well. And then one thing that makes this app unique is I do have a, this notes and dashboard section where here I could type something and save it to a button so I could save it for later. And then in the dashboard, um, they do have kind of page sets for Google Home and Alexa, um, which you would also find, I think, in some of the grid for iPad apps or grid three if you're using Windows as well. Um, so that is a very quick run through of those, but I'm happy to show anything else or questions um, that there might be. Oh, Terry, you're muted. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep us moving toward the end, but if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, Elizabeth will peek at the chat as we are kind of uh, moving through these just last few slides and I will go ahead and share our evaluation as well once we get to the last slide. So that will just take a minute to get there. Um, so if you are more interested in some of those symbol-based AAC apps that Elizabeth has mentioned at the very end, some of them that have those text-based features built in. Um, you know, we, if you look on our Simon Pacer page, um, you can definitely uh, go ahead and um, view that archived workshop as well. Um, and Elizabeth, I'm seeing one person in there is having a hard time downloading uh, the workshops. Can yep. you just make sure you capture that email address so we can send it to them? Yes, Denise, I will do that right now. Okay. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please certainly feel free to let us know. Um, the way that you um, are able to get a certificate of attendance is by completing our evaluation. This should open up when we close um, the workshop as well, but I'm gonna put the link to it. I, put, I already put it in the YouTube stream if you're watching via YouTube, and I just put it in the chat as well. Um, so again, um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on the link uh, to that SurveyMonkey evaluation, just gives us a little bit of feedback on this workshop. Um, and then once you click to submit that evaluation, 
um, it'll bring you to a thank you screen. And on that thank you screen, you will see um, some blue link text that will take you to your certificate of attendance. Um, again, if you have issues accessing that, please feel free to email STC, like Simon Technology Center, STC at pacer.org. Um, and we can help you with that. And like I said, I know some organizations won't let uh, folks access Google Drive links, um, but if you can, please access it that way. Um, so we are really grateful that you joined us today. Um, we're sorry we didn't get to every um, uh, app that we had hoped to today. The time just kind of flew, um, but there is a ton of information both um, in the PowerPoint slides that we shared in the beginning and is also in your reminder email for today's workshop um, and also in that um, a supplemental handout as well. Tons and tons of information and great links um, to get more information about all of these different text-based resources. Um, Elizabeth, is there anything else that you would add to this? Um, I think that covers it. I know we went through them very quickly, but if you have any questions about any of um, the apps that we looked at or even ones that we didn't look at today, because there are others available, please just reach out to us, reach out to me and I'm happy to um, kind of walk through some options with you. Yeah, Elizabeth is our communication specialist in the Simon te Technology Center at PACER. So um, she will have lots of great info if you have specific questions for her. Um, and we love when people reach out to us with questions. So please um, always feel free to do that. And um, if you know you found this to be a helpful workshop, uh, please watch the workshop page on the Pacer Center website. So just pacer.org. And there's a tab um, that'll take you to workshops and upcoming workshops. Um, we do workshops on all different assistive technology topics all throughout the year. Um, so please feel free to check on that. Um, and other uh, areas of PACER also do workshops on different aspects of special ed law and advocacy and all sorts of interesting things like that. Um, so please keep in touch. And we are really grateful that you all joined us for this hour today. And we hope to see you more in the future. I'm going to go ahead and end the, the presentation today. Um, so thanks so much. <laughs>